All right, we're gonna go over some COVID-19 uh, respiratory precautions. It's dangerous out there in the field. There's a lot of stuff flying around. So I'm gonna give you some tips. This video is brought to you by the good people at Falk. So we have our patient who has suspected COVID-19. Uh, we wanna be very careful, okay? So if patient's wearing a mask, go ahead and keep that mask on. And I'll walk you through some of the things we're gonna need. Uh, we need extra barriers for this, okay? And the key for this uh, type of patient be prepared before you get everything started. You don't want to just wing it, okay? So you notice I have everything laid out of our airway supplies. I have my blade pre-selected. I have a Mac 4 ready to go. Tested, make sure the light's working. I have my PPE, which I should be wearing. But I have an N95 mask, I have a gown, and I have uh, eye protection. Very important if uh, you're doing this and everyone helping you has the same uh, type of protection. I have my tube holder open and ready to go. Okay, so I'm not fumbling around with plastic. I have my ET tube. Uh, I tested the cuff, it's ready to go. And I also have, so I have an 8 and I also have a 7.5 ready to go. So there's no fumbling, I open them both, put them both in the case. I have a Ambu bag, and you'll notice that I have a filter on the end of it. And I also put my entitle uh, capnography on there just so there's no fumbling around, okay? I also have um, a vent circuit. And I'm, uh, it's very important to show you this because I'm going to use the bag for that. Also, I have the bag that came with the ammo bag. Okay, we're going to use that as a barrier. We also have a, a non breather and we have a nasal cannula. And we also have our ventilator that's set up on a test lung. And I'll walk you through uh, the differences we're going to use when we have uh, this type of patient, this kind of high risk patient. Okay, so now the thing about with this patient, we want to avoid spreading any kind of droplets okay so we're going to try to minimize bagging as much as possible okay we're not going to uh, we're not going to try to uh, use the ambu bag if we have to if we don't have to okay we're, so we're going to either if they're not oxygenating great we're going to put them on under breather and if they're doing okay we're going to throw them on nasal cannula and you could uh, put that at six liters we're not going to put it at 15 liters because we don't want to uh, create any kind of high flow issues and spread this um, virus all right, let's get started. Okay, we've got our PPE on, we're all ready to go. We've got my N95 mask, I have my eye protection, gloves, mask. Make sure all of your, uh, anyone helping you is uh, gowned up the same. And I'm gonna take off the mask just for the video so you can hear me. I want you to notice we have a lot of clear plastic bags here. Okay, we're gonna use them all. This bag uh, was what this blanket I'm kneeling on came in. Okay, it's, very, it's clear, I could use this. This is the bag that the Ambu bag came in. Okay, very sturdy, clear plastic. We also have the bag that the vent circuit came in. We could use that as well. Okay. So, and these clear plastic bags are going to protect us. Okay, they're going to protect us from uh, the patient and cross, cross contamination. Okay. So let's say our patient is ready to go. And they're wearing this mask. Okay, but they're not oxygenating very well. Okay. If they were oxygenating okay, we could probably just throw a cannula on them. Okay? And we're not going to throw it in 15 liters like we do when we're typically intubating. We'll throw it on six because okay? we don't want to we don't want to blast that stuff around. So we're not going to uh, crank this all the way up. Okay? If we use an arm of breather, it does create uh, a little bit more of a barrier. Okay? So we could use this appropriately uh, because we're also going to use this barrier also. Okay? So let's say this patient is, needs to oxygenate. Okay? So put it on a breather on this patient. We crank it, and then we're going to create the patient barrier. Okay, so we're not going to do we're not going to do a lot of bagging with this patient. Okay, so we want to prevent any kind of droplets. Okay, so typically uh, when we're uh, about to intubate, we'll pre-oxygenate, bag them up. Okay, this time we're not going to do that. We'll have this ready just in case. But you notice the ammo bag. I have it set up with a filter in line. Okay, to protect us, and then we have our end title all ready to go. So there's just no fumbling during intubation. You don't want to fumble during this process. Okay, so we're patient on our breather. I'm going to take the best of these three bags. And that's what I'm going to use is the barrier. Okay, so I'm going to cut this bag and make a clean cut. I already made one here. I'm going to go ahead and cut. this side also, because we basically just want a big clear sheet and that's what we're gonna use as our barrier, okay? 
And now this bear is gonna protect us from droplets, and we're gonna do everything under this barrier. You should be able to intubate under this, okay? So we have our patient, barrier is on. Okay, and just for added safety measure, I'm gonna take some tape, and I'm gonna tape this to my intubating arm. Take two pieces of tape, and I make a little X, see that? And this is so the barrier doesn't come off when I'm intubating, okay? So I'm ready to go. I have my ET tube with my 10 cc syringe ready to go, and let's go ahead and intubate, okay? You notice I'm going to do everything under this barrier. Okay. I see my cords. I'm in. Slowly take out the blade. Style it comes out all underneath the barrier. See this? This is all underneath the barrier. Tube is up. Cup is up. And then, in the back. Notice how bilateral breath sounds, okay? Have capnography, okay? And we're gonna keep this all under the barrier. And from there, I have my vent set up, ready to go. And then I'm going to switch all under the barrier. There we go. Okay, so everything happened all under that barrier. Okay, and I have it taped to my arm here. So now I can just do Whatever I need to now. Here I might have my Thomas holder. Go ahead, gonna go ahead and put that on. And there we go. Go ahead and secure the two. There we go. We have it. We have a secure airway. We have a patient on our ventilator. And we did it safely because we did the left arm barrier.